morning, everybody. Welcome to the Life and Health Show. Today we have a really special program prepared for you where we're going to talk about bulimia. And we have two very special guests with us, Dr. Fields, and specialist in eating disorders, and Karine, um, who is getting, who's going to talk about us about her experience with bulimia. Thank you both for being today with us. Can you explain us what is bulimia? Bulimia nervosa is an eating disorder in which a person binges and purges. A person with bulimia will typically eat large amounts of food um, and often more junk food than fruits and vegetables, especially under times of stress or anger. After they eat all this food, they often feel um, so out of control that they try to compensate for their behavior by um, purging um, in different ways. Some techniques include self-induced vomiting, um, taking laxatives um, or diuretics, or exercising excessively. When you're struggling with bulimia, life is a constant battle between the desire to lose weight and stay thin and the overwhelming compulsion to binge eat. During an average binge, a person may consume from 3,000 to 5,000 calories in just one sitting. After it ends, panic often sets in and the person turns to drastic measures to undo the binge. Purging isn't um, effective at getting rid of most of the calories that person consumed in their binge, which is why most people who have bulimia often gain weight instead of lose weight um, during their bulimic period. Vomiting immediately after eating will only eliminate 50% of the calories consumed in that sitting at best, um, and usually much less. This is because calorie absorption starts from the moment the food enters your mouth. Laxatives and diuretics are even less effective. Uh, laxatives get rid of 10% of what you've eaten, and um, diuretics do nothing at all for your calorie um, consumption. You may weigh less after taking them, however, this is only due to the fact that you lost water weight, not true weight loss. I see. Karine, can you tell us now a little bit about your bulimia and how did it start? I know it's a really delicate topic, but it can help many people watching the show. Yes, of course. Well, um, I'm a college sophomore now, and I've been um, in recovery of bulimia for about two years now. But I, the problem started right when I transitioned into high school, and in middle school everything was great, and I had my close group of friends, and I had great grades, and I was very involved. But then the minute I went into high school and I was a freshman again, it was really difficult. First of all, because my friends dispersed into different schools and also just so many different pressures were now surrounding me. And on top of that, I was also in a ballet academy and when you turn 15 is when you start competing for the prime roles in the productions. And everyone else I felt was doing great and everyone else around me was thinner and more beautiful and more successful. And the only comfort I found was in food. And so every day I would come home and I would just eat and eat and eat, but then I'd feel super guilty about what I had eaten because I needed to stay thin. So the only effective method I thought I had was to purge, and this continued through most of high school. Thanks for sharing that. So, it, Dr. Fields, if we have like a family member or a friend that's going through this, what are some of the symptoms that we can see? Yeah, um, there's some signs that emerge um, from uh, people suffering with bulimia uh, that often indicate um, that they have an issue. For example, um, if you catch your friend or family member binge eating on um, uh, loaded carbohydrates, especially in secret, that's a sign. Um, people also purge by exercising for hours um, they may go to the bathroom multiple times during meals um, and eat until they're painfully full and then complain of stomach aches. Um, and they often just feel a loss of control with eating, um, especially binge during uh, times where they feel guilt or shame um, and their body weight can fluctuate um, during these periods um, and often lead to depression. Sometimes uh, some physical uh, repercussions of Binging and purging are um, missed periods or lack of menstru um, or 
your menstrual cycle will stop, damaged tooth enamel, or even puffy chipmunk cheeks um, caused by repeated vomiting. So bulimia has very serious repercussions, both psychological and physical. Now, can you tell us more about the causes of bulimia? Is it genetic or environmental? We actually don't definitively know what causes bulimia, although there are several, several theories. Genes actually may play a part. Uh, there is some evidence that women who have a sister or mother with bulimia are at higher risk of, de of developing um, the issue. And um, psychological factors may play a part as well including if someone has low self-esteem um, or they're not able to control their impulsive behaviors or if a person has trouble expressing anger. Some people with bulimia may have a history of sexual abuse or um, have experienced depression, self-mutilation, substance abuse, or obsessive compulsive behavior. Oh, very interesting. And Corinne, after you, you seeked for help, you went to uh, Dr. Fields and you started doing cognitive behavioral therapy. Have, can you tell us a, a little bit more about how this therapy works? Yeah, so taking that step towards trying to recover was really difficult and I felt ambivalent and nervous about giving up my binging because it felt like an effective method at the time, but I knew it was harmful. So the first thing my family and I did was to seek for professional help, and knowing that my family was there to support me was very, very, very important in this process. And during the cognitive behavioral, behavioral therapy, Dr. Fields and I targeted the unhealthy behaviors of bulimia and the unrealistic negative thoughts that surround it. Um, yes, when Kareen first um, came to me, we started um, her first phase of bulimia treatment um, by focusing on stopping the vicious cycle of binging and purging and helping her to restore normal eating patterns. Yeah, I had to learn to monitor my eating habits, avoid situations that would trigger my binging, and to cope with stress in ways that didn't involve food, and eat more regularly in order to reduce the food cravings, and I had to really fight the urge to um, second, we focused on identifying and then changing her dysfunctional views about her body image, self-worth, and diet gain. Um, I had to explore attitudes about eating and I had to rethink the idea that self-worth is based solely on weight. Finally, um, the, the final phase of bulimia treatment involves targeting the emotional un issues that are the underlying causes of the eating disorder. Um, through therapy, we focus on relationship issues, underlying anxiety and depression, low self-esteem, and feelings of isolation and loneliness. Also, I sometimes prescribe antidepressants um, for my patients with bulimia. Uh, the most common antidepressants prescribed are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like Prozac. Thank you so much to both of us for being this morning with us. All this information, I know it's really helpful to many people that are watching this because eating disorders every time become more and more common, and especially in adolescents. Um, uh, remember that if you suspect that a family member or friend has bulimia, talk to the person about your concerns. Bulimia is a serious disorder that should never be ignored, and the person's physical and emotional health is at stake. Thank you.